Hello, I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management, and welcome to our Women in Wealth series. Today, we're going to talk about the power of financial planning, and this is something I do every day, so it is a passion of mine. But most people, when I start talking about financial planning, their eyes glaze over. They're like, oh my gosh, anything but this topic, you know. So bear with me. I'll try to make it as, um, you know, fun, I guess. It's not a fun topic, but yeah, I, it can be, depending on how you look at it. Um, but essentially, uh, people do ask me like, hey, what is a financial plan? So look at it this way. Um, when you're about to go on a long trip, uh, especially somewhere you're not really sure if you know been there once or twice you just want to make sure you you know take the right roads and highways and you know avoid the places under construction that their bridges out things like that uh you put your gps on right uh us old heads used to get a go to the AAA office and get a trip tick uh, before one of those long journeys now we just put it on our ways or our google maps or something like that so a financial plan is similar to that. You can you know, make it an analogy. So essentially it is your GPS for your financial life. Um, what we're trying to do is, you know, figure out what your goals are, what your values are, what your visions are of your future. And we're trying to figure out how to help you to get there while avoiding some of the potholes and bridges that are out and things like that. Is it perfect? No. Um, but it is, is it better than not doing anything at all? Heck yeah. Okay. So I think Ben Franklin was the one who coined the phrase, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So a financial plan, again, not perfect, is going to help you avoid some of the potholes, things that you may uh, not realize that may happen along your journey. So it's really to help you guide and through uh, a lot of different uh, life transitions and things that are going to happen along the way. You know, most people think about financial planning. One of the first things people talk about is, oh, your retirement plan. And yes, we use it predominantly for that. And it is really, really a great idea to check in on a financial plan before you retire and figure out, hey, is this going to work out? And is it going to work out as well as I thought? Or do I need to make a few like changes before I do retire? And, you know, quite frankly, if you can do that plan, maybe 10 years before you retire, um, there's more time to fix, um, you know, some of the problems that we're going to you know, possibly find in your plan and maybe make the road a little bit easier for you to go down during retirement. Now, remember you're in retirement or you could be in retirement 20 or 30 years. So that's a long time to have to think about like, Hey, am I going to have enough money? Uh, am I going to be able to pay my bills? Am I going to be able to eat well? Am I going to be able to travel? Am I going to be able to sustain the lifestyle that I've become used to? Tom Hegna talks about going from paychecks to playchecks. And it's one of my favorite quotes. And I say it all the time. And hey, Tom, I give you credit almost every single time, but definitely want to make sure that people know that, you know, when you, you know, be, while you're working, you have something called a paycheck, right? When you retire, you don't have a paycheck. And that's why Tom Hegna said, play check. You need something to pay the bills because you were used to a monthly inflow or every two week inflow of cash flow. Well, obviously you're going to kind of look at social security as one of those uh, inflows, as long as you've, you know, worked the quarters and all that fun stuff. But guess what? Social security is not going to cover all your bills. So what else do you have to, to kind of get you through that and get you up to what your expenses are, your cash flow needs are? So that's one of the biggest things that we talk about in financial planning. Uh, and a couple other things would be, you know, college planning for the kids, um, you know, rainy day funds, like, Hey, I want to buy a vacation home or, you know, a, a big, you know, secondary home somewhere, things along those lines and, um, long-term care planning, whether or not it's, you know, talking about the strategy of how to handle a long-term care event, or do I need insurance? And of course, you know, there's also estate planning, like, Hey, I want to leave a legacy and this is what I want my legacy to be. And how do I make that happen? Not just who's getting how much of my money, but how do I want to be remembered? Obviously who gets my money is a, is an important part. And 
of that conversation, um, but it's not the only part of that conversation. So those are the things that do go, you know, some of those are the big uh, parts of the conversation that go into financial planning. And there's many, many more facets of um, financial planning. Um, and, you know, going kind of back to that retirement conversation, one of the biggest expenses in retirement is your health care. I mean, guess what? You're going to live 20 to 30 years. You're going to have some health care bills even if you go into retirement healthy, you know, at some point you're going to need a little help, right? Um, so there's that. Uh, you do have to think about how much it's going to cost you for some health care. And obviously Medicare is a big part of that. And getting set up on a, a good Medicare plan at the beginning, I think, is very, very helpful. Um, so, but it's not free right? You have to pay for it. So you have to think about that. And then obviously, what are the other costs for your health care? So that is going to be one of the biggest expenses in retirement. I'm uh, going to share a story about uh, a new client who had come in just for financial planning. She was not, you know, she didn't have her assets with me. Um, I think it was like September, October, she came to me. This was several years ago, obviously, before the pandemic, right? And she was like, 62, 63, about to turn 63. And her husband had already retired. He was a little bit older than her. And she was like, man, I like, I like what he's doing. I'm stuck at work. She was in a huge stress, stress job, right? Where she was constantly, um, being needed. And, um, it was just, a, a really, uh, tough job for her and she's seeing her husband. Right. So she's like, all right, well, guess what? I want to check out too. I want to kind of go have some fun. So she came to me and she's like, oh, I want to do, you know, I want to do a plan for retiring. Um, so let's kind of look at what I have and, you know, this is what I, these are my goals and this is what I want to do. Um, now her husband, he had retired at 67. Like I said, he was a few years older than her. Um, and you know, that's how she kind of realized how stressed out she was because she could see the stress coming off of him. Um, so we sat down, we spoke about, you know, what her goals were, all that fun stuff. What, what had they accumulated? What were their income, um, goals? And as far as post-retirement, right? Were there, you know, uh, what was their income stream going to be? Was it only social security? Was, was it investments? What, what were they going to live on? Um, they wanted to plan on living a, on about um, $120,000 a year, roughly around there. Um, but they also had some debt. They had about 90,000 in debt. 20,000 was credit card, another 70. They had done a renovation a few years ago. Um, and she wanted to, uh, kind of live on that hundred to $120,000, you know, range. Um, she was really making about 120 and she's like, all right, I'll settle for a hundred thousand, you know, once we're both retired. Um, and so we went through that and she, like I said, she wants to retire in December and her husband had not done uh, a plan before he retired, but she, you know, obviously she was the second one retiring. So she's like, oh, I better, you know, double check this before I pull that lever. Um, she was also going to take Social Security early. You know how I feel about that, right? So that would have meant that she was going to give up 8% of a benefit each year that she took chose to take that benefit early. That's a huge amount of money to give up, um, you know, leave on the table. Um, and her retirement age was about 66. So, you know, like I said, she was going to take it about three years early, again, 8% per year times three years, that's a 24% benefit cut. And that's a permanent benefit cut. So right there, right off the bat, um, there was a, a flag on the play, essentially, because, um, that was going to decrease her long-term income because she was going to have much less of a social security benefit that then she was really able to have. Um, so, you know, that and the debt, and there were a few other things, um, we had to run through, uh, I basically had to sit down and, and give her some bad news. I was just like, all right, well, I know you want that hundred thousand dollar a year lifestyle. And I, you know, I did this financial plan and um, I have some bad news. I mean, if you retired today or, you know, in, in December and you live on 
$100,000 a year, you're essentially going to run out of money by the age of 74. You can imagine that conversation, right? And how horrible it was to give somebody that news. It is not fun giving somebody that news. Uh, it's also awful for the person receiving it because they're like, la la land like yeah we're gonna retire we're gonna have all this fun we're gonna do this we're gonna do that and then somebody like me comes along is like uh sorry that's really not feasible so uh essentially i'm like the fun police so not always a great job to have to tell people no so you know it there were a couple different options that I could offer her. Uh, the one was option B. Uh, yeah, if you want to retire now because you're in a very stressful job, you can. However, in order for your money to last through the age of 90, you could only spend about $60,000 a year versus $100,000. So there was a $40,000 gap of what she thought she was going to be able to spend versus what I was telling her would be a safe spend. Uh, you know, obviously her reaction was, uh, no, thank you. Um, but she also, you know, didn't like the idea of running out of money by the time she was 74. Um, so we wound up working on, uh, option C, which I had prepared for. And I talked her through this and I said, Hey, listen, if you work another three years, just three more years, um, and during that time, you can work on paying down your debt. And that way, you know, you'll have more of your uh, cash flow spending will be available for fun cash flow spending. Um, we could arrange, well, we could plan, right? It's not guaranteed, but we can plan uh, an annual spending allowance of about $75,000. And then that way we can make sure you're recovered through age 95. Now, do we know if somebody's going to live to age 95? No, we don't. Um, the good thing about our medical system is that it is pretty good in a lot of cases and people with um, some significant diseases are able to live longer. Bad news is it's really expensive. So there's good news and bad news on that. But, you know, we want to make sure that you have enough money as opposed to running out of money and still alive. Then what do you do? You go live in a cardboard box. It's really not a good game plan. So we talked about option C, um, Hey, we're, you know, look at $75,000 a year. It's a cut of your original hundred thousand, you know, it's a $25,000 cut. Um, but you'll have that debt paid off. Hopefully, uh, by the time you retire, your social security benefit will be a little bit higher. Um, and you know, this way we, we at least have a better chance of you not running out of money during your retirement. Um, so that's kind of what we wound up doing. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's not a perfect science, but if she hadn't done that plan and retired in during that December, like two or three months after we had spoken and she didn't do any kind of plan, she would have found out the hard way that that, that idea was not going to work out well, but by the time she realized it, it would have been too late for her to do anything. And her life would have drastically changed at that point. And, you know, it's a little hard to go back to work at age 74 when you've been out of work for, for 12 years, because there is age discrimination out there. Let's face it. Um, anybody who is over 50 has faced it. It's not in your face. It's very subtle, but it is there. Um, so that would, that would be a challenge. Um, so that's the big, um, thing that I've worked on with people as far as financial planning. Obviously we do something called like a stress test, uh, that will say, Hey, you know, the probability of you running out of money, you know, of spending this amount versus that amount and living to age 90, 95, that's something that we like to work on too. Again, nothing is perfect, um, but this is what we try to focus on. Like, what are the best tools that we have in our shed to make sure that you are going to be able to reach your goals? Um, also, you know, keeping in mind your visions and values um, and how you're going to incorporate them into your plan and your long term financial plan at that. Um, so those are some of the fun things that we talk about. I know it's all boring, but it's really, really important um, to make sure that you do 
um, have a plan of some sort before you do some kind of major spending or make a life decision. Look, there are several major life transitions in your life. It's getting married, getting divorced, um, losing a family member, uh, like, and that could be a child or it could be a spouse. Um, you know, that changes your financial plan on some level. Uh, and, you know, we're not always a hundred percent prepared for something like that, but if we have a good plan under our belt, maybe we can react, um, you know, with a little bit more insight, uh, as far as where to go next. Um, I'm going to not going to talk too much about social security, even though that is a big part of financial planning when to take your social security. Uh, you know, I'm a huge, huge believer in waiting till your full retirement, uh, which uh, in a lot of cases is about 67. Now there are still some people at 66 and, you know, eight months, 10 months, 12, well, 12 months would be 67. Um, and, um, you know, you have that kind of uh, conversation. Although sometimes it makes sense to wait till age 70, especially if it's a husband wife situation and you can afford to, well, those are the social security conversations that we have because there are, there's obviously some benefits to doing that. Not everyone can afford it and it doesn't mean that it's right for you, um, but it is definitely something to have a conversation with about um, either with your family financial advisor, your financial planner, um, you know, somebody who's going to help you through that conversation uh, as far as, you know, what is best for your situation and how it's going to impact you. It's not only going to impact you like short term, it is a long time to be in, in retirement and to collect that social security benefit. So taking the even a year earlier than full retirement age is an 8% benefit cut and it's a permanent cut. So, um, I do beat the horse on this one. Um, so bear with me, you know, how I like my social security conversations again, obviously if you have a major health issue, life threatening, then, then the conversation is a totally different conversation about when to take social security, um, healthcare costs long and long-term care insurance. Like I mentioned, that's part of a retirement plan conversation. Um, and even if you don't do long-term care insurance, you should have a long-term care strategy. Uh, it, you know, some people can't afford long-term care insurance and some people can't afford not to have it because it is like a barn fire on your investments if you have to start paying out of pocket for long-term care. But minimally, you should have a long-term care strategy. And what is that? Long-term care strategy? Who's going to take care of you? Are you going to be in the house? Uh, if somebody's going to leave their job to take care of you, how are they going to afford to do that? Um, you know, if you do have some kind of long-term care insurance, is it going to cover somebody from your family uh, taking care of you? So there's a lot of different things to think about there as far as, you know, how it's going to impact you uh, long-term and short-term. Uh, so that I think is a big, uh, conversation, uh, to have with yourself, with your spouse, like what are your visions and values? What are your thoughts about, uh, retirement? And that's what I'm going to make our action item today. Um, think about what you vision your retirement to be. Think about, um, you know, have you had a financial plan and, you know, how close are you to retirement? Maybe you may need to think about that um, and then how you want your legacy to be um, and what you're getting right now as a paycheck and what your income is going to be after your retirement. You'd be really surprised how big of a difference it is and you have to make up the difference. So easy math. If you say, hey, I need $50,000 a year to live on and I'm going to get $30,000 from Social Security, where's the other twenty coming from? every single year for the next 20 to 30 years. Plus you have to bank on, there's going to be inflation. So that $20,000 is in about 20 years, you're going to need $40,000 to feel like you're spending that $20,000. So there's a lot that goes into this. It's not just like connecting the dots, right? Uh, or connect four. Uh, you have to think about a lot of different things. So with that, I am going to leave you to have a great day. Uh, I am, again, Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management. My website is forgewealth.com, and you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram 
at Forge Wealth, YouTube at Forge Wealth, and LinkedIn, Regina McCann Hess. Go make it a great day.